Hello, Hello, Claudia. How are you? Oh, good. I'm doing good. It's, it's a, another Monday here. We, you know, Monday, Sunday, Thursday, they're all the same after a while. <laughs> yeah, ticking off another week now, now that we know what day it is, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. And you but know, wasn't it a beautiful weekend in Palm Springs? It was beautiful, especially then. I, I don't know about, I think last time we talked about seeing the comet. We went out on Wednesday or Thursday Did to look for it? it. We didn't see it, of course. No, but, we didn't either. Um, I was amazed at how cool it was at night. I know. We'll take that. I, and you know what, I, I think that's the reason so many people from, you know, different parts of California or the country are coming here yep. is because it's just been, it's been spectacular, you know, a couple mm -hmm. hot days, but this weekend has been particularly great. Been so, great. And yeah. Even though really we're having a great time, this has really kind of been a sad week for so many celebrity oh. oriented deaths that have happened this week right i, I mean, know regis Philman to uh kelly preston to uh olivia uh, de havilland to olivia de havilland, like, olivia uh, havilland was like sunday morning i think yeah yes i mean it's just amazing but today or yesterday sunday was the burial of uh, uh representative john lewis i'm going to play yeah. a quick little screen here uh boy of, of any time that we need this gentleman to be with us it's now and we hate now. to you know hate to have him move on to bigger and better worlds but we wish him all the all the best him and his family wow but the ceremony was pretty amazing right it was amazing it was interesting to see him come come over the bridge and people singing songs and the edmund pettus bridge in yes, selma yes yes oh, right four strong carriage and people singing songs and people wow. yelling out we love you and we're very, really we're very very he deserves that and more. And let's talk about something that's going on uh, here in the desert, entertainment oriented. Yeah, you've so, got some new stuff you've, you've been up to. Yeah, I, a good friend of mine is part of Modern Men, which is one of the gay choral groups here in the desert. One of, I think, four or five groups. This one has actually been here for around 30 years. And like many organizations, like you and I, we've, we've learned to uh, keep doing what we're doing virtually. And right, everyone's trying to do new things today. Right. And these folks, these folks, what they're doing is they have an auction that they're doing right now. It actually starts uh, tonight, so, uh, Monday the 27th, and it runs through, I believe it is, I think it says August, or is that? It's uh, August 2nd. And they're, it's, it's a, an auction. They have trips and pictures and events and dinners and wines. Oh. Yeah, all that you can uh, give money to. And of course, it helps support them. And you know, we're always about supporting our local fellow entertainers here in the desert. Now, are they going to be doing, do they have a lineup of virtual concerts they're going to be doing? It's my understanding on the site, uh, and we'll be putting the email or the address uh, late, later on. Yeah. Uh, you can go on and see one of their virtual concerts that I think they've done. So they are there also. But right now, they're really focusing on trying to get this auction. I think they want to raise around $20,000. And they have some great prizes, so, or wow, great gifts. that's I guess. great. Yes. That's yes. great. Well, I'm sure there's things like this going on all over the country too for, for yeah, folks that don't necessarily live here or come here all the time, you know? Right, so that, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah, it's, it's just really great. And speaking about kind of people around the world, here's the one that's really interesting. A good friend of mine, uh, his name is Todd Sherry. He is the second guy in there. Um, he was part of an event this past Saturday called Play Per View. These are productions where they're reading scripts of plays that they've done in the past. This film or this uh, play or this play was called Knife to the Heart. It was actually uh, up on a stage in LA in 2018 and it had some pretty oh. big names associated with it. You can see, let me get out of the way here. Uh, Andrea Bowman, she's from uh, Desperate Housewives. Mindy <laughs> Malik, yeah. Malik, she's from uh, Hot, Hot in Cleveland and Frasier. Todd Sherry, a good friend of mine, he just was in a few episodes of The Resident. And then Josh Zuckerman, one of the folks who was on uh, 90120. And this, these folks were putting this event together for a, for a group called Save the Children COVID Relief Fund. So they're all oh. about gi giving us entertainment and also giving money to people who, you know, need it in this time so how do, how does one get to to view this now is it viewing or radio is it it's, it's viewing and, and there'll be a link on our site here when this gets posted oh, okay people, okay great people can find out about and so this brings us to what we're going to be showing our guests our, our viewers today from our palm springs point of view oh. show a show that you hosted an outstanding show tell us about that i'm so excited well you know house of cardan is an amazing document documentary directed and produced by 
locals, local friends, local neighbors, P. David Ebersol and Todd Hughes. And Clyde, they are literally neighbors of yours. Right there, okay. <laughs> Hold on, wait, let me see if I can. <laughs> can you wave to them? <laughs> Pierre Cardin is celebrating, I think, well not celebrating, I think it's, I think it's his 98th? I think He's 98th like that. this year. And the great thing about uh, Todd and David, what they did was they did their US premiere of the film at the Palm Springs International Film Festival. So we were so there. That's, we were when, there. that's when I snagged them to catch an interview. And that's when they told us that they were um, um, working on, you know, different, you know, getting it to open in different, what's the word, get it in different countries, right? Mm -hmm. So it's opening now in Australia, in, Adel in Adelaide, I think in Australia, and then in New Zealand, in, in Tokyo. And I believe there are 20, maybe 30 countries where wow. countries have opened up with enough, with enough social, physical distancing, distancing in a theater to actually show it. Yeah. So and that's this, great. And yeah. if people have not seen this show, it's it's a it's not only like you said not only is it informative but your interview with them it's very personable and they're very personable oh yeah they're great some of the shots that you show are really good and i don't think many people know that there is actually a hotel in palm springs right that's associated with pierre cardin that people don't really know and it's right in the middle of town and that is the hyatt is that correct? And it used to be Maxim. So it's Maxim. really fun to listen to the history of that. Yes. yes. Yeah. And I'm going to check one minute because I may have gotten a note from David, P. David Ebersol, which is David. Okay, here, let me read this to you. Sure. Here's what David got back to me on. It opened in Australia July 23rd and New wow. Zealand opens July 30th. U.S. Canada would be late August um, theatrical in theaters in Montreal for sure. And in the U.S. special events and virtual events. Wow. And I would venture to say probably more virtual events um, and start streaming on September 15th. So that's so everyone can get can see it then. The new U.S. trailer drops on Tuesday, which will be tomorrow. Wow. Oh, of next week. I'm sorry. The following week, which is into I think it's into August. Right. Um, on Vogue.com, along with new posters by local graphic artist Tom Dole. Wow. You know, do you know, Tom. Yep, I, well, yep, I think, yep. Um, and then France is September 21st, Japan is October 2nd, Taiwan wow. October 3rd, Russia is quote unquote autumn, and China, Germany, and others are TBD. So that's happening. Well, Italy, Portugal, Israel, Poland, Iceland are all TV premieres. And one of the things we can say that. here, one of the things we can say here in the desert is that you saw it here first on Palm Springs. Isn't that Carnival. cool? And they had just, and they had, they had just won the Fashion Film Award in LA. Uh, I think it was just prior to the Film Fest. So mm -hmm. it was, it was great. So that's, I mean, Vogue.com has actually been supporting, you know, supporting the film. So. Well, that sounds great. So I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad that we're yeah. showing that. And, and because we're talking about fashion, I just want to put out a big shout out very quickly to the people here at Seaplane here in the desert down at the Uptown District area who provide me with all my shirts, a lot of my shirts yeah. that I wear. You know, we're all about fashion here, you and I. We're trying to do a variety of good things. And so we're very glad today to be able to show uh, House of Cardan to our viewers from a show that we did, la you did last year, right? Well, it wasn't last year. It was um, the beginning of this year. Oh, was it? Okay. Yeah, Even because better. it was at the Film Fest in January oh, that's and then came back for Modernism Week, right? And right. I know Film it Fest. seems like a long time ago. I was just going to say. We've kind of been hunkered down for uh, going on five months now, I think. What day is it? <laughs> exactly. Maybe more. Okay, everybody. Okay, well, everybody so enjoy. Too, and I hope everyone loves it. If you haven't seen this, take a, take a look. And if you have seen it, look again because it's really, it's really great. Sounds good. All right, Claudia, have a good week. Okay, you too, Conrad. Bye-bye. Garden. He's one of the greats. I'm here to talk to P. David Eversall and Todd Hughes about their amazing, absolutely fascinating documentary, House of Cardan. So, okay, so I think I remember at the beginning of the film that Cardan clearly stated that he wasn't interested in a in any kind of biography or even writing an autobiography just didn't mean anything to him. How did you 
grab a documentary of the scope. We say it's kind of divine intervention. We were in Paris uh, with our last documentary, and we're Cardin fans, so we just wanted to try to meet the man, shake his hand, go into his store. We've heard that he goes through his store on Tuesday mornings, make sure everything is to his liking, Aww. and that he would love to meet Cardin fans like us. And so we went in, and before we knew it, we talked to one person, talked to the next person. They were introducing us to Pierre Cardin as documentary filmmakers, and he said yes to doing a documentary. So we That's were like, amazing. And what, at 97? 95 when we met him. Okay, so now he's, what, 97? Still going still, strong. Still if you watch this film, you're yeah. going to be enthralled by yeah. everything he's put his fingers on. I mean, truly a visionary, truly yeah. an avant garde modernist, right? Absolutely. I mean, not just yeah. fashion. He we really, do, yeah, go ahead. He really exemplifies that if you do what you love, the money follows. Yeah. Right? He's never been motivated by money. He's motivated by creation, which is such a refreshing thing. Now. And you've truly captured that in the film. I mean, everything that he got involved with, he made happen, but he still kept this this the brand, the whole the whole idea yeah. of brand and then going as a businessman going into licensing, it's been wasn't very, he? It's been very interesting with this movie because often, you know, you get press and we're going to get fashion press or we might get film press. We've been getting business press, so Forbes, Inc., okay. uh, you know, Financial yeah. Times covers us because, he, because he is a remarkable businessman. He's a, you know, he's a mogul. Well, wasn't he the first to actually license his name, like, He wasn't globally? the first, but he was the first to see the potential okay. and the scope of it. Yeah. And he licensed how many products all the over the world? At one point, I believe he had 800. 800 this licenses, which means many more products than that. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, people say 800 products. We're like, no, 800 license deals. That's a lot of it's products. It's pretty amazing. <laughs> well, I mean, at one point, he actually bought Maxime's in Maxime's Paris, which was the hub of all of the creativity of everything from, a, from the Belle Epoque on yeah. and music, theater. He bought that thinkers. restaurant in 1981 when it was falling on hard times. Interesting. And he bought it, and then, using his business acumen, developed it into an international brand and opened up restaurants all over the world. Yeah. And, and in up, Palm Springs? He ventured into hotels, his first and only Maxime's de Paris Suite Hotel. Right? You can almost see it from here. Isn't that incredible? Boulevard, 1986. <laughs> yeah. And you always talked about the full circle. He always talked about the full circle. This is part of it. We're all coming back to Palm Springs. Yeah. So that hotel, then what, he was, did he ever come to Palm Springs? Oh, was yeah, yeah, yeah. down in Palm Springs? We actually have great pictures of it. You know, it's funny in a documentary, you have to be careful about not taking too many splinters and going off in different directions. But we do have pictures of him on the balcony of the Hyatt, oh, what, what is now the Hyatt. We the found Hyatt. a pack of like those old photos you used to get with the negatives color print of him and his friend checking in and goofing around at the and mountains you know etc oh, right it's so cool it's, it's really amazing cool it's amazing so what was it like to actually sit down and talk with him you know it's interesting i guess because at this point we've done and it's our fifth documentary so we've talked to a lot of icons in our lives it's we don't really quite get starstruck or we need by it but when you spend time with people like this i mean he is just human but extraordinarily so. And so you get insight into life, you learn about things about yourself, well, you find out things you know that you never would have thought were yeah. imaginable. I mean, and it's really, it's we've a We've developed it's an honor a real affection with him. Yeah. So it's so nice with everyone in the house of Cardin when we see each other, it's just, we're just like, we can't speak to each other because we don't speak French, they don't speak English, right. but we're like, we love you. Oh, were they throwing the clothes on you? <laughs> you're yet. still working on that. Uh, you're still working, working on that. But, and speaking of working, how long did this film take to, it was take to produce? Two years to the day from when we met Mr. Cardin. Okay. The reason we know that is that we, mm -hmm. uh, the, the whole goal of meeting him in the first place was to get a picture for Facebook with our friends and be able to say, like, we're so cool, we're standing here with yeah. Mr. Cardin. And, uh, and that picture popped up as a two-year memory on Facebook the day we were premiering at the Venice Film Festival. Oh, wow. So the exact day, so two years to the day. Wow, amazing. Which is a record for most documentaries yeah. for us. It's Yeah, they go on. <laughs> and were you saying you were like living in Paris for a while, just oh, following him around? Yeah, Practically. we spent, uh, last year we were really editing, but the year before we spent about half the year in Paris. We're very lucky to have found a friend with a beautiful apartment who let us use it. And the more time we spent with Pierre, the more he got to know us, the more the cameras disappeared and he became himself. And we got a really special. Wow, that's amazing. And then with offsetting that with all the archival footage that you acquired, that was 
unbelievable. Yeah, it and was a deep dive into it. Wow, and then yeah. interviewing interviewing um, certain, like Guope in, in China. I mean, the, because China's a huge you know market. Fun, it, it's, it's an amazing thing when you do a documentary on somebody of the level of Pierre Cardin and it's authorized, which mm -hmm. is that you call people up like Guope and they say, absolutely, I'd oh, love to be in the Pierre okay, Cardin so documentary. Okay, so that's how it works. Or, you know, Dionne Warwick or... Dionne Warwick, Warwick was, was front and center. Gautier, Gautier like, you know, was... And they say, yes, I want to be in that. Yeah. I sent uh, down, so. on Facebook, I found the Jean-Michel Jarre fan page oh, yeah. and sent an email saying, we're in Paris one more day because we had just found out that he was married to Charlotte Rampling and they were good oh. friends of Pierre. Pierre was a sponsor of his in the early days and he used uh, Oxygen, remember that album by yes, him? Yes, yes. For all his fashion shows. It's his and favorite And so music. that morning, we're in Paris one day too, come on over. And he gave us that beautiful interview where he wow. really told us about how he's a patron of the arts and has sponsored so many artists with his great wealth. He doesn't keep it for himself, he sponsors Commissions operas, commissions Yeah, plays. I mean, he had his own theater for a number of years. It's a spot which... 52 years. Yeah, which yeah. really was cutting edge. Like a lot of avant-garde theater, from what I saw, you know, yeah. was was yeah, yeah. Uh, was going yeah, yeah. on. And, and, and that's why he... Set um, design. And, he knew and Alice Cooper. Costumes. And, in 1972, oh. he knew this guy was doing experimental musical theater. And it was Pierre, uh, Alice Cooper doing his shock rock mm -hmm. show. And he brought it to Paris, and it created a riot. A riot. Oh yeah, that was a star that that you've got to catch that. You definitely have to catch that in the documentary. We love that moment when people amazing. go like, "What is Alice Cooper doing at a Pierre Cardin he's, documentary?" I know, and he's, he's so great. He's such a nice man, Alice Cooper. I've heard that yeah. too. And I love when we guy. asked Pierre, like, "Did you like the Alice Cooper show?" And he said, mm, "Parts of it." <laughs> yeah, mm, yeah. <laughs> As Alice is sitting on this like really mod red, well, he's being Cardin. electrocuted on stage. <laughs> well, <Right. laughs> also bringing it back to the future here. Two things: um, your home is filled with so many artifacts, so many pieces of furniture and collectibles from Pierre Cardin and I hear you're going to actually um, do a pop-up at some point with well, your, no, modern, your home well, will modern, be on. Modernism Week um, is uh, doing a signature tour of our house Okay. and that's on February 16th. We're okay. working on trying to put together a pop-up exhibit of things in our house but also some things from Paris and as well. And your car. And yeah, that car. We're going to drive the car. <laughs> so yeah, he did an, a, a 1972 AMC Javelin that we own, and actually now it's a tax write-off because it's the thing that made Cardin say yes to working with us, which is that he saw the car oh. on the phone, and then he said, you drive it, ah, the circle comes it back actually again. works, and we were like, yeah, and then he looked at the looked at the phone, looked at us, looked at me, looked at Todd, da, 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 and he said, what do you want to do, and when do you want to start? Too bad Who you could have taken him for a spin, too. That right? is amazing. <laughs> well, you know, it's Rick all Rigo, about the car. His nephew is coming it's here in February, and number one on the agenda, he wants to drive. He wants to drive oh, the okay. He's That's his nephew who, who does a lot of the... Um, the glamorous Italian in talks. the he's, yeah. he Actually, he's been working with, um, with uh, his for uncle for... Yeah. Um, and Okay, so what's you've been all over the world shopping this around to all the festivals. What's next? What about distribution? Uh, so, so we've sold to 20 countries worldwide, China, Japan, France, uh, UK, Germany, etc. And we finally just closed a, a deal for North America. So it will come out in North America in theaters in May. Okay, so be May. mostly independent theaters, indie yeah, films? Yeah, you know, like, or? Like, the, like your local art house. But we'll be here in Palm Springs. Yes. The well, Camelot, you know, mostly. Should be, it should be the Camelot is okay. what we think. It could be, there's that other great theater that's out in, um, in Palm Desert. That oh, plays a lot of that, documentaries. That, that, that try try, yeah, that one. Yeah, try loose. Try, try, try loose. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. No, that's a restaurant. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, Todd, David, thank you so much, and do catch it, House of Cardan. Thank, thank you, you, Claudia. Thank yeah. you. Thank Cheers you. again. Congrats. Yeah.